expression statements in Pidgin all end with semicolons. So here we have four expression statements. The first assigns the value of 3 to x. The second assigns 2 plus x to cow. And the third calls the function foo with the argument 1. And the third calls bar with no arguments and assigns its returned value to rat. The reason for these semicolons is that syntax in JavaScript is free form, meaning that you can use white space however you like. Or to put it more accurately, wherever the language allows or requires a white space character, you can put any kind of white space character, and you can put as many as you want. So here, for example, we have the statement x assigned the value 3 written with white space in three different ways. In the first example, we just stuck to a sensible style of how you would most likely write it. But as you can see, we can do things like, say, split the expression up onto multiple lines. Again, not that you would usually want to do this. Having a freeform syntax does occasionally help us out, such as, say, when we're calling a function and it has, say, seven arguments, each of which are themselves complex expressions. It's really nice if you're able to spread that onto multiple lines. Most of the time, however, you're just going to write your code in the same indentation style we already saw in Pigeon. A comment in the style we saw in Pigeon, where it extends to the end of the line, that starts with two slashes instead of the number sign. JavaScript has another style of comment, though, which can spread onto multiple lines. So if you have a lot of text you want to include, say, where you're documenting the, what a function does, you would probably want to use this style of comment. And this style starts with a slash asterisk and ends with an asterisk slash. As you can see with this multi-line style of comment, it then actually is possible to have commented out text that precedes code on a line, rather than always following it. You should be warned, though, that you can't nest a multi-line comment inside another multi-line comment. What happens here is that the interpreter sees the opening slash asterisk, and then it will ignore everything it reads until it gets to the next slash asterisk. So it's not going to see that you probably intended lemon slash asterisk here to be commented out. Identifiers in JavaScript conform to the same rules they do in Pigeon, except in JavaScript you can also use underscores, and you can use the dollar sign. So these are all valid identifiers in JavaScript. In Pigeon, we implicitly created variables by assigning to a name. But in JavaScript, we have to explicitly declare the existence of a variable using a var statement, which starts with the reserved word var, and then followed by the name of the variable to being declared, and then optionally with an assignment of some initial value. So here, for example, we're declaring a variable named monkey, and then we're declaring a variable named zebra with the initial value 3. When we declare a variable but don't give it a value, its value is not null, rather it's this separate value called undefined. So here, for instance, if we declare a variable named Jeff but don't give it any value, and then pass Jeff as argument to the function foo, the parameter in that call to foo will itself also be undefined. In contrast, if we attempt to use a variable which we haven't declared, such as here imagine that there is no variable named Amanda, then that is a language error. A function definition in JavaScript can be written in the form of a literal, that is, it can be written in the form of an expression which returns that new function. And we write this as simply the reserved word function, followed by a pair of parentheses in which we list the parameters, separated by commas, and then we follow that with the body written in curly braces. And again, the syntax of JavaScript is free form, so here the body is written on the same line, but usually the statements are going to be written each on their own line. And also note, you can put whatever spacing you want around the parentheses symbols and the curly braces. Here I put a single space in between the end parenthesis and the opening curly brace, but you can put it, say, after the reserved word function, or you can put a space before the first parameter. You can do what you want. This, though, is just, I think, the better style. In any case, here in this code, we're declaring a variable named Helen, and we're assigning it a function. And that function has two parameters, the first called apple, the second called orange, and there's one statement in the body that simply returns apple plus orange, and notice that we end with a semicolon, because this is a variable declaration statement. If we then create a variable named Dan, and assign it the value returned by Helen with the arguments 3 and 5, then we assign Dan the value 8. Like the arithmetic operators, the logical operators in JavaScript are symbols, not reserved words. So AND, for instance, is written as two ampersands, OR is written as two pipe symbols, and NOT is written as an exclamation mark. 
it'll take you a little while to memorize these, so I'll remind you as they come up. In JavaScript, the values false, null, zero, an empty string, and undefined are all considered for the sake of logical operations and condition tests, like in an if or while, they are considered false. All other values are considered true for the sake of these tests. So here, as you can see, not true, of course, returns false, and not false returns true, but not null, not zero, not empty string, and not undefined also all return true, because those values are all themselves considered false for the sake of a logic operation. Again, all other values other than these five are considered true. Here are a few more examples of logic operations. First, this is a test of whether three is equal to three, which of course it is, so it returns true. And then we have a test of whether three is equal to negative two, which of course it does not, so it returns false. And then we have not true equals false. Well, the not operator has the higher precedence, so first not true evaluates into false, and false equals false is true. This expression is testing whether or not three is equal to three, or two is greater than four. And of course, three is equal to three, but two is not greater than four. Well, one of the conditions tested true, so the or is true, and this returns true. Note, though, that the parentheses here could have been left out because the equals operator and the greater than operator both have higher precedence than the or, so they would have been done first anyway. 